So if I jump to here, then you don't see me, obviously. Actually, we're seeing you too right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session of AAC in the Cloud. We're excited to have you all here. I'm sorry we're a little slow. We've had a little bit of technical difficulty that's, you know, but happens when you're doing an online conference. So that's the fun of technology. But we're excited to be here today with Dana Hall and Jennifer Jacobs. And they will be doing a, a session on communication partner training. They have a lot of great things to share. Um, we may step in for a second and make sure the slides are coming up. We had a little bit of an issue with that, but these two are super patient and really, really kind to, to work things out with us. So um, we'll turn the time over to them. We're gonna let them share their screen and make sure everything goes as planned and we'll see from there. Great, thank you. Share the screen. Am I doing it like that? Mm -hmm. We're good? Yep, looks good. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. That's where, I'm uh, that's where we, we bring. The stem. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I'm and I'm Dana. And today we're talking about partner communication training and getting everyone on board. So we'll discuss um, some of the trainings that we've had at our school, some projects and tools we've provided, successes and challenges that we that we still face. But we wanted to start off by telling you a little bit about ourselves. Um, so we both went to Penn State undergrad, um, then I stayed there for grad school and Dana went on to GW. Um, we lived in Hoboken and we started working at PG Chamber School around the same time. Um, and then we carpooled and we started becoming best of friends. Um, we traveled, we started families around the same time and we developed a shared interest um, in AAC. So we worked together to provide AAC trainings and evaluations. Some that are great at soldering and electronics. Dana and um, Jennifer, I'm going to have you hold on for one second. I think our broadcast is not sharing for some reason. So I'm going to hold on one sec because I'm seeing that apparently some of our attendees are not. So, boy, what what a mess. I'm so sorry to, to have issues that we have to try and work through here. looking at. No, this has nothing to do with you <laughs> at all. <laughs> Not even remotely. Can we get an extra 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You take the time that you need because at this point, <laughs> seriously. All right. I think we're good. So you should be able to, to keep going. So maybe we'll have you start um, again with a quick introduction and, right. and move forward with your slides from there. What, what are you seeing you say? Right now I'm see, uh, you're, in a, you're in a sharing screen mode, but it's showing um, the video mode. So if you just want to click back into your slides, you should be in good shape. So if I just pop back over to here. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. There you do. It's on a delay. They're good now. Okay. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Take two. I'm Jen. And I'm Dina. And today we're talking about partner communication training and getting everyone on board. So we will be discussing trainings, projects, and tools that we have provided to our school and our successes and challenges that we face. Uh, we wanted to start off by telling you a little bit about ourselves. Um, so Dean and I both went to Penn State undergrad. We didn't know each other then, but I stayed there for grad school. Dean, I went to GW. And then we lived in Hoboken together um, for nine years. We started carpooling and traveling. And then we had families around the same time. And we developed um, a shared interest in AAC. We um, do trainings and evaluations in AAC for our school program and in the community, um, our friendship, as developed both personally and professionally. Um, as Jen was saying, we have worked together at PG Chambers School located in Northern New Jersey for the past 12 years. At PG Chambers, our mission states that we work to discover the unique potential within every child. P 
PG Chamber School is a private, non-for-profit school for children with varying abilities and diagnosis. Our program consists of early intervention, which includes home visits as well as playgroups here at the school. We have a full day early education program through our Kids Count Child Care, and we have school programs featuring preschool, elementary, middle, and high school classes with a focus on special education and related services, and that's really been the focus of PG Chambers for over 60 years. Um, we also support communities in the school. We're contracted for related services, evaluations, and consultative services. Our organization is a really large community that has been so excited about supporting growth and development, innovation, and new ideas, and that we're excited to share some of those with you today. So our students at PG Chambers School include those with a diagnosis of Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, cortical visual impairment, genetic and chromosomal abnormalities, among others. Uh, approximately 75% of our students have complex communication needs and use some form of AEC. Our students really range from early beginning communicators to advanced high-tech device users. Our staff. So our staff consists of approximately 150 women and only three men. Our staff works together collaboratively to meet educational, feeding, and assistive technology needs. We meet regularly to review our students, our priorities, and next steps. We really focus on the whole child. Our staff ranges in age, experience, and time here at PG Chambers School. Sometimes this is their forever job, and for others, it's just a stepping stone. We have staff who have worked a few months to over 30 years. Teachers and power professionals here have so many responsibilities. Um, they range in supporting personal care, so toileting needs, to feeding and implementing lessons for small group instruction, following schedules for equipment use, and the list just goes on and on. We have high expectations for our staff, and we continue to have this when it comes to communication. We work together so students' teams can set up devices, use core words, model, ask open-ended questions, use less verbal prompts, and also be fun and motivating. It's a lot and it's hard and we get it. So we wanted to help support our staff with trainings and in-services. We continue to grow in how we present and engage staff, but let's take a look at the research first. So knowing the research and having it available can really help support you when it comes to your administration and finding ways to get you that time that you need to work with staff whether it be getting time for an in-service day or working with coaching and staff directly with the students, it helps to have the evidence to back you up. I'm not sure that we were ever in a position to convince our administrators of these needs, but we were always ready with the facts, and here are a few. Those successful communication interactions between AAC users and communication partners will depend heavily on the skills of the communication partner. Partner instruction should be viewed as an integral part of AAC assessment and intervention. Being an effective communication partner or AAC facilitator is not intuitive. It's something that all of us continue to have to work on and focus on. The attitudes and expectations of people in the environment may to an extent influence all children's language development. So when it comes to training materials and resources, there's really no reason to have to reinvent the wheel. Others have shared their information and resources, and that can always be a really good starting point. Some of the key components to Dr. Jill Center and Matthew Bod's um, eight-step instructional model include um, talking about theory and strategy description, demonstration and modeling, practice, 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 um, feedback, and coaching. They also utilize the mnemonic of s'mores, which can also be a really nice visual tool for the staff that you're working with. Um, Tabby jones Wobler also has a program called Model as a Master Pal. She actually did a pre-recorded AAC in the Cloud conference session where you can learn more of the specifics of her program. Um, if you also search some of the blogs and sites like Practical, you will find additional blog posts regarding the work that others have done with their staff in terms of training. Um, so what we've done is we've really tried to weave in some of those eight steps where and when we could in fun, engaging, creative ways. At PG Chambers School, we did trainings for our staff that we want to share with you today. And we've really focused on this for the last five years, and we've always tried to engage the staff while training them and trying to make it fun. 
So four ideas that we're gonna, going to go over today is getting staff on board, our chat breakfasts, the AAC clinic, and the summer project that's coming up in a, next week. So getting the staff on board. This was our initial presentation about five years ago, and it focused on core words and aided language stimulation. And we wanted to get our staff on board by using core boards. So we utilized an in-service day in September where we spent three hours, <laughs> seems like a long time, going over key points um, that were targeted. So we talked about presuming the potential for all of our students to learn language and AAC, knowing the language, so using consistent terminology like aided language stimulation, core fringe vocabulary, robust language system, um, and keeping the culture of open expectations. We provided um, printed visuals for classrooms, and we especially like the mix of memes. Um, we even created our own memes using apps. Um, we like Ryan Gosling and Oprah Winfrey's over there. We also utilized videos from the internet and of ourselves. One of our favorites is Gail Van Tatenhove's whole class aided language stimulation, where she talks about an emergency. Um, and then we completed a few hands out, hands on activities. Um, we did modeling while using um, some repetitive books, and it was really helpful for us to model it first. Um, and then we developed core boards um, with uh, the teams. So what we did was, luckily we have 12 SLPs on staff, so we were able to prep for this. We used poster board, we printed words using either symbol sticks or PCS symbols. Um, we used contact paper for the poster board, we laminated all the symbols, and then we had teams together um, cut and Velcro their boards. We gave the classrooms a choice of having either 10, 25, or 44 symbols with blank boxes for the fringe words. We wanted them to be part of the process and we were hoping for more buy-in. Um, and then they created the, these boards. Um, now we could even go to a learning resource center and you can blow up a screenshot um, of a board and board maker or print out from, from a specific website like assistiveware. Um, and you can also print out two and cut the symbols and then they can be removable. Uh, so what we found in terms of feedback from having that initial in-service was that classrooms really enjoyed the hands-on component and they also felt really invested in the process because they helped create and build those boards. So in addition to really understanding the why and the rationale behind the strategies, they felt that they were part of it by making the materials that they were gonna be using. Um, some of the challenges that we faced after having that initial training was that we found that the boards were a bit limited in terms of the language that we could model when using them. Um, we also felt that sometimes those removable symbols could be challenging. They oftentimes walked right out of the classroom. We weren't sure what happened to a lot of those symbols. Um, the placement of the words also felt a bit random, and we had kind of just designed those ourselves as a, a speech department. So in hindsight, we maybe made some changes or would have wished we wanted words in different areas. And we also felt that those initial boards didn't necessarily match the symbols and the devices that were being utilized by the students in the classroom. So we started by getting everyone on board, then we gave everyone a board, and now we're actually working to move beyond the board. So the words that were provided on the board, we really recognized that they were not enough. It wasn't a language system. Um, and as referenced on Linda Burkhart's website, learning words in isolation can be a bit different than learning the patterns and the pathways to words within a language organization. So the next thing that we did to encourage our staff to engage in trainings was we held some chat groups. Our most successful was our chat breakfast. So of course, anything with food is a great motivator, especially when we have one SLP cooking waffles in a chef hat. We held two of these meetings because, um, we held two of these breakfasts because meetings tend to take place in the mornings and we wanted to give the opportunity to as many staff as possible for them to attend our breakfast. The first morning we had maybe around 15 or 20 people attend, but the next day word got out about how fun and engaging our breakfast was and we ended up having double the turnout on the second morning, which actually had to mean double the waffles. Our flyer read, come and talk with your mouth full, and that is what people did. They ate and had the chance to chat with four different AAC systems. 
They rotated the systems while talking with their neighbors about picture prompts that were provided on the smart board. Pictures included things like pop culture, Pinterest fails, just fun images that would get people talking. Um, after the groups had a few minutes to practice, we came together to share how people felt and what they were able to say. So our feedback was great from this chat breakfast. People love the hands-on practice, the fun pictures, and of course, eating the breakfast. Um, they really appreciated the opportunity to practice without having the students there. Um, one of the challenges was that the systems um, and layouts were, were not necessarily used by their current students. Um, they had a limited time to practice, and we were unsure if the staff practiced or used the devices afterwards. We hoped they did, but we weren't sure. So our third idea that we'd like to share is the AAC clinic. So at our school, we have an assistive technology equipment clinic, which includes splinting, orthotics, and durable medical equipment. And we had the exciting opportunity two years ago to add the AAC clinic to further enhance that AT program. So one day a week for an hour, Dana and I provide a venue for um, our staff to discuss AAC needs. So this could be a new device, um, discussion, problem solving, decision making, we try and help the assessment process, whether it's obtaining a device, engaging in a trial, or even just progress with the system they're using currently. Um, staff can come with the student that they're working with. They can come without them. We're really open to however whatever works for the therapist. Um, we can explore current systems, observe them, working with the students or without, whatever works. And then last year, we actually expanded our, the scope of our clinic. We are fortunate enough to have a partnership with Linda Burkhart. Um, this partnership includes consultations for our students, teams, and families, as well as providing us some feedback regarding our skills as coaches and consultants. So to further explain it, um, we have this, the new project is web-based. So we choose a student and their team, and. Then we share pre-recorded videos with Linda. We have a live over the web console where we discuss the students' current skills and challenges with the team and family. So Linda coaches the team and we just have an open discussion. And after that, we develop an action plan. Um, and then we reconnect with Linda with a follow-up. It has provided us the opportunity co to connect with more students and teams and develop our skills. So we have a quick video to show you of a consult with one of my students, Diego. Um, while Dina pulls it up, I'll talk a little bit about it. It shows the consultation format and she's giving me feedback in real time um, regarding modeling. So I'm working directly with them and she's telling me some specific ideas, words to say and movements to try. Linda was giving me specific feedback, um, which was great to you know further show also the staff that's working with him because we could record um, that console in the platform that we use for Zoom, and then we can teach others as well. Um, it was a great way for others to observe it and learn from Linda and myself. 
Diego has a home team of therapists that work with him too, that were not able to be available at the consult. So for Diego's mom to be able to have access to this video to share that and educate those therapists that are working with him at home as well. It just continues to spread the knowledge that everybody working with Diego is going to be using the same language and the same consistency. So some of the feedback that we've received regarding our clinic that we offer, um, the pros have been that we again have another forum for teams to come together to work on a student, um, work with a student, work with the team, problem solving, as Jen was saying, just that, that other forum and that opportunity for everybody to come together. Um, it enables other therapists within the department to have an additional set of eyes on a student, maybe if they're facing some challenges or just hitting that point where they're not quite sure what to do, having that extra set of eyes and those people to, to talk it through um, has provided them with support. We've also given teams access to Linda's expertise, which we really feel is invaluable. Um, some of the challenges that we've faced in terms of our clinic is really scheduling related. So um, the times that we have clinic available, therapists aren't necessarily able to come if they have um, scheduling needs of their own. We also, as we mentioned, have related service providers who are in and out of the building for contracts. So they might not be available to schedule when we have clinic. Um, as well as teachers not necessarily being available to attend the full amount of time that a consult can take um, because it can be challenging to find coverage for their classes. One of the other um, pieces of feedback that we've considered with the component of Linda was that some felt that having Linda in person would enable the teams to maybe feel more of a connection as opposed to communicating through the camera on a computer screen. It just doesn't necessarily have that same feel. So we wanted to show a mini case study of one of our students here at PG Chambers School, um, someone whose team and family really embraced these training opportunities, the strategies that we've been talking about today, and the, the coaching that we've shared. Um, so. This is a, we're gonna show a couple of video clips of a student named Matthew. The first one is gonna be shown, this was two years ago. Um, Matthew was using just a handful of single word tactile core symbols. Um, he would reach for them and grab for them. He most of the time would twirl them in his hands and then kind of drop them to his tray or to the floor. The team and I just really felt unsure as to what Matthew was interested in or really what he was capable of communicating. Okay, Matthew, I'm going to present you with your choices. Let me know what you want to do today. We can listen to music. Nice job. You got the symbol for music. This is music. Right, we feel our shiny mm. Mm. music. Mm. And the second video here um, again shows Matthew kind of accidentally selecting a voice output switch to express a message. Again, we were really unsure as to you know, if this was a message Matthew was interested in communicating, if he had the intent when he was doing it to get the switch and understand what that meaning was all about. Um, so you'll see him here. Hi, Matthew. Do you have anything to say this morning? Um, so at that point in time, about two years ago, we had the opportunity to um, share Matthew as a case study at the Teaching Movements for Communication course, um, which is hosted with Gail Porter, Claire Cotter, and Linda Burkhart. Um, I believe this is a course that they are again hosting in Maryland in July, and I'm sure if you search um, through Facebook or through the web, you can find more information about that, but um, it is a course I would highly recommend. Um, so at that point in time, we shared a bit of Matthew's story with them, and they encouraged us to really model a robust language system across Matthew's day. 
So at that time, we weren't even sure how Matthew would access a book to express language, but we really just started with the focus on model, model, model. Um, and at that time, his classroom team and family were really on board and excited to try something different with him. Um, and what we did was we utilized videos like the one that I'm going to show next to really make sure that everyone working with Matthew was modeling and communicating with him in a consistent way. My arm is out. My arm is reaching. I have something to say. I see those fingers going. Let me bring your book down. Do you have something to say? You were moving your fingers so nicely. I think you have something to say. Maybe you want to talk something. You're on look. Should we look at the rest of that Halloween video? We were looking at a Halloween video. <sighs> So as you can see in that video, we started using a pod communication book with Matthew. Um, at that point in time, we were kind of just letting him reach towards the book and giving him that feedback that maybe he had something to say. Wherever his hand landed, we kind of just gave him the feedback about what he was doing. Um, again, the big piece for Matthew was that initiation. So we utilized this video to share with all the staff members that were working with Matthew to be able to quickly recognize when he might be initiating that he had something to say and share. Um, and that was a really good starting point for us as a team to being to use shared language and give Matthew all of that same feedback whenever he was doing something communicative in nature. Um, at that time, you can also see a little bit of the book that we were using was just regular um, white background picture symbols on the 12 per page. And there have been um, some modifications and changes made over time since that video that you'll see differently in the next video. So this last video that I'm going to show was actually showed last week at Matthew's graduation from PG Chambers School. Um, he is now consistently reaching towards his book to initiate communication. So in that previous video, kind of where his hand is just moving along his tray, he will now actually reach out. He will visually scan his immediate area and reach out to his book to let somebody know that he has something to say. Um, we're working still to shape his head nods and shakes. So we've actually moved away from the direct selecting for Matthew. Um, and that was a collaborative team decision in terms of where he was going with that direct access and if he was going to be able to um, utilize that graded movement enough to be able to clearly indicate what he was trying to say. And, and we, at that point, we felt that um, he would be more easily understood by a variety of communication partners if he used an auditory plus visual scan. Um, Matthew is now able to communicate a variety of language functions, including requesting activities, expressing his opinion, and asking questions. People, talking about school people, who are we going to say thank you to? Can you help me? Are we going to say thank you to your teachers, your assistants, your therapists? No. Your class? Boys? Girls? Are you saying yes? I saw your head coming down. Yes? Are we saying thank you to your class? No. Thank you to the boys. No. <clears throat> Thank you to the girls. Your head is coming down. Are we saying thank you to the girls in class 11? Thank you to the girls. Back. 
So I think that um, part of our reason for wanting to show this mini case study with Matthew was to really talk a little bit about Matthew's progress and attributing that to his staff and family members believing in his potential to learn a robust language system. Um, the team and family really showing a willingness to be persistent with their modeling and an openness to receiving lots of training and coaching um, so that we could all be consistent with the supports that we were providing Matthew. So a lot of what we talked about so far in terms of the activities that we were covering was really to show and highlight the importance of training and supporting communication partners because they are gonna be the ones that drive our students to make the progress that they're gonna make with their communication skills. So our final project um, is kicking off this summer and we're really excited about it. Um, because we're looking for buy-in from our staff that's really center-driven. So we're having them be a part of the learning process, and we're hoping to generate excitement by making it a friendly competition. So our idea for the summer is based off of the eight components that Dina had talked about before with um, Dr. Center and Vaud. So we're really focusing on the theory and strategy description the demonstration modeling, the practice, and the feedback and coaching. So what we were thinking of um, is to have staff in classroom teams choose what they would like to learn about and which way they would like to learn about. So they can think of if they were doing the theory and strategy description, they can review articles, they can listen to a podcast, um, watch a webinar, go to an in-service or even request us to provide an in-service for them, or even making their bulletin board um, design for AAC. Um, and then another option for demonstration and modeling could be taking classroom videos of themselves. Um, and then skipping down to the feedback, they can actually have some video self-reflection um, from us if they're you know, looking for that. And also some practice. So whether it's the chat practice, um, if they're practicing in the morning, and then somehow recording this. So we haven't gone through all the details yet, but filling out a form that says what you're doing and the name of the podcast or webinar and how long it was. And then we are going to give them some points. So it's a point system that we arbitrarily came up with. And we just decided, so for the feedback and coaching, which was probably um, would receive the most because you're getting some video self-reflection. So we would say like 50 points for that. And maybe for the article review, 10 points. So whatever it is, they receive points weekly. And the classroom teams, we were thinking on Fridays to announce it overhead um, to have the classrooms know who's in the lead and who's maybe falling behind. And then at the end, we were thinking um, of an incentive. So we asked our principal and our executive director to be part of um, the development of this project so they could approve some of the incentives. And they even came up with a few. Um, so some of the incentives and see if maybe this could work in your school too. Um, we are thinking to passing the kitchen duty. So that's like cleaning the kitchen to speech. Um, morning coffee, we are thinking an ice cream party, reserved parking spots, our director came up with chair massages, um, catered lunch, really whatever works for your, um, for your school. And our principal came up with even making them as a package deal. So we're excited to see, you know, what we end up doing for first, second, and third, for the first, second, and third place. So this will be a five-week um, project. And each week, um, we'll have a visual of who's in the lead and who's falling behind. So we're looking forward to that. And we're always open for fun and new, exciting ways to enhance um, classroom knowledge. Um, so just a couple of final thoughts. We, um, we really talked so much about the different activities and things that we've done in, over the past couple of years through doing some of these different trainings and um, working with our staff, we've learned that 
those were working with our AAC users could get on board. And if they really, really understood the whys and the hows, then they would become the best communication partners for our students, which would ultimately enable our students to learn how to communicate to the best of their ability. So we have a little bit of time. We, we can also um, talk about some fun and creative ways that you've um, done some staff training in maybe your place of work or with your teams or families. Um, so we would love to have you share some of those ideas through the Slack board as well. Um, and also we can take some time to field any questions. We'll see how this works. <laughs> Okay, so if I come down here and then come back, do I come back to here? What do you see now? Nothing. You still see the. It's still. Okay. They can see us, I guess. No. Um, make it plus. Yeah, how do I do it? There. Okay. There. No, I think that's them. Can you hear us still? Well, they have the muted volume. Okay. Okay. You can hear us. Um, so I'm just going to quickly jump through the Slack board and see if anybody had any questions. Um, we will be able to share our slides. We just ha were having some technical difficulties initially. So yes, we will go back on and share our slides for everybody. Um, in regards to the question related to um, the web-based consult with Linda, we use the Zoom platform to have her um, there. We project it onto a large screen and have the team members all in front of that screen. Um, and then we're there with her for about two hours where we um, first spend some time discussing the student with her, with the family and all the team members. Um, we then have some time with the student, depending on how long they can spend with us, 20 to 30 minutes with the student there. Um, like you had seen with Jen and Diego, where Linda kind of gives us some coaching in terms of things to try and do with that student live. And then um, bringing the student back to class and having some time at the end to do follow up with Linda and the team and to develop that action plan. Linda does record the Zoom so that we can then have that session um, to share with other staff members who were not available to attend or anybody who would be interested in utilizing those same strategies um, with any of their own students. Right. So once Diego's um, platform, once the Zoom was recorded, I had emailed it to the whole team for them to review because some of the time the teacher couldn't stay the whole time. And then I also passed it along to some other, oh, someone who took um, my maternity leave, she looked at that and then some other you know, staff in the speech department also could review it. There was a question about the videos for Matthew um, watching or having access to them. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. Um, I think we'll have to just go back and double check what our um, photo release forms cover in terms of sharing those videos to be used with other staff. So I would just have to um, double check and clarify on that before I include them in the slides um, for everybody to have access to. Right, so there's another question about um, how did we capture it? So we have a release um, form for our parents and then we also ask for, for even specific more um, consent. consent for this particular presentation. For this one and even to participate in Linda Burkhart's um, consults, she has her own um, form too to sign off. Any other ideas that Anyone else has, please jump in. <laughs> oh, someone did. Um, an AAC toolkit that includes interactive staff trainings and PowerPoints through speech musings. And I think I did see that um, 
through a Google search or even looking on the practical um, blog site as well. Um, how did we share the videos with students and staff? I think you went into team meetings. Um, I right? think um, because the, the way that we're structured here, we actually meet as classroom teams weekly. Um, and each week we discuss different students and the, the successes and the challenges and the strategies that we're utilizing with that particular student. In the case of Matthew and his classroom, there have actually been several students who were using similar communication systems. So we were able to almost weekly review what those strategies were. We could look at videos together um, to really ensure that everybody was working with Matthew in the same way, but also with the other students who were using similar communication systems. Um, but Google Drive is probably a great forum to use to you know, share some videos that way. Um, we have a therapist here who was going to create some presentations, like an in-service through Google, because that was what they used at the school. So it's definitely a, a place to consider sharing information. We've also used Dropbox, too. So mm -hmm. um, if people like myself, had, I have an individual Dropbox account, but then we have a school Dropbox account. So I've been able to take videos on my cell phone put them into my bot Dropbox and share them with the school's Dropbox account. So that was another way that we've been recently able to share some of the videos that we've been taking. Uh, there's a question about um, iGaze users using the boards. I think in terms of utilizing the supports of large boards with iGaze users, it's probably, again, um, really beneficial for them to hear the auditory pathways of how you're getting to the vocabulary that you're getting to because um, they're not going to necessarily, it depends, I guess, on the size also of the boards that you're using. Um, our large boards, the symbols are actually pretty big. Yeah, we made them if three you, by three. If you rip them off, if you use the Velcro and you pull them off and you bring them closer, or maybe utilize an eTran board with the removable symbols, you might be able to bring them to that iGaze user and have more success that way. Um, but continue to use partner assisted scanning. I mean, Linda really, um, she really focused on that as a way to just practice. Yes, no, I know it's with iGaze, um, but even for all students, she really like honed in on our skills too, on how to do it, always to include the something else or something different as your fourth choice. Um, just because it's so easy to practice throughout your day, you don't always need that visual piece. You can, you know, give the visual of your head movement. So continue to do partner assisted scanning, even if she just says yes for the first time. That's so you're honoring that. You're showing her that that's the communication exchange and that's what she replied yes to. And even taking that time to model the partner assisted scan as if you were the one making the choices. So. Um, if your snack options are chips, cookies, pretzels, or something else, you model first how you would make that choice. So, okay, I'm going to choose a snack today. Do I want chips? No, I'm shaking my head no. Do I want cookies? No, I'm shaking my head no. Do I want pretzels? Yes, I'm nodding my head yes. I want the pretzels. Uh, that's my choice. Now it'll be your turn. So really, again, modeling that process for the student before giving them the expectation for them to be part of that, um, being able to communicate that themselves. Um, Victoria mentioned an idea that they do um, words and wine once a quarter where there's wine, juice and water too, and games and activities with the devices and programs our kids use. Awesome idea. I love it. I have a feeling that would be a really nice evening opportunity <laughs> for staff and families. Um, then a question about the clinic. Staff use the resources. Oh, did they sign up? So we have a white, um, a whiteboard outside of our door for signups, and we have the dates for the whole month. And sometimes they don't sign up, but we always send emails saying, you know, just a reminder that we're available, and we do follow up too. So if there's um, a student that we hadn't seen in a while, we might, you know, talk to that therapist and ask and remind them that we're available. And we do get consistent um, signups. We've also been able to be flexible too, and we've been trying to increase our flexibility and not be so rigid to the schedule. So if another therapist can come to us and say, you know, look, I have a, a student and I would love to do the problem solving, but I can't come at your clinic time. Could you come when I'm treating them? We've been trying to 
um, find a way to have that flexibility within our schedule so that the clinic becomes accessible to all staff. Yeah, we currently switch off each week. So one will be a Thursday at a certain time and then a Friday at a certain time um, so that you know we try and reach as many SLPs in their schedules as possible. So all we have so far. Any other questions or else? other ideas that people would be interested in sharing? I mean, we've done a lot of things for May. I don't know if anyone else out there does May Better Hearing and Speech Month. Um, we've done some scavenger hunts. We've done chapstick, we've done taste tests, we've done relay races, um, but we really focused today on these four that, you know, related to the components um, of trainings. Well, continue to feel free to post any of your ideas on the Slack board as well, and we'll keep an eye on that. Um, thank you for giving us the patience of working it through in the beginning when we were having some technical difficulties. Um, and also thank you to Jen because she currently has a one month old baby and she agreed to do this with me despite the lack of sleep and lack of clear thought. <laughs> so um, a little shout out to Jen for for being willing to come in and do welcome. this presentation with me. So. Yeah, someone's asking, yes, we gave out chapstick and I think we said there was like a cool saying to it. Any remember, anyone remembers? <laughs> <laughs> we would give out like little incentives. Um, yes, so we gave them out like, we'll come back to you on that one. And yes, we will be providing the slides. So don't worry about that. Thank you on my new Yes, I will get them up as soon as we um, finish with this part of the presentation. So the slides will be available. Okay. Thank you. All right, we thank you all for joining us and we hope that you all have a good day.